Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. It is with great joy that I want to inform you all that I finally put that AKK Omnibus F4 Pro board to good use. Since it is now officially supported by the ArduPilot code, I decided to install the ArduPlane firmware on it and put it on the Phoenix V2, seeing as this would be the lightest possible option to have a fully featured autopilot on it, and indeed it turned out pretty good. Yes, the space in the plane is not great, especially when you have to observe the CG as well, and with a motor in the nose, but even with that I managed to put enough useful weight behind the CG to actually get a tail heavy setup which meant that I could now move the battery forward to balance that out. I also had to put the run cam to at the front to help ride the balance because even with the battery all the way up front it wouldn't balance quite level. I guess a major part of why this happened is the fact that I put the FPV pilot camera on top of the rudder and all the twisted wiring that goes along with it should have also helped. Yes, I said I was going to use the micro APM in this one but just as I was starting the build I remember that the omnibus would be a better fit and would require less wiring and less of a hassle where to put all of the components. Because I don't want to water this video down with a how to on the omnibus arduplane install I will make a separate video which will describe this process in more detail. Also the detailed build log for this install will be available in a day or two in my blog. The link for that is in the description below. Right now though let's get to flying. First takeoff was in manual mode naturally and I flew like that for a bit so I can trim the plane anew since I reset the trims when I installed the autopilot. Only the elevator needed some trim so I was quickly done with that and then proceeded to test the fly-by-wire A mode and right from the get-go it performed perfectly and didn't even need a correction in any direction. It would just keep the plane level without pulling up or down so I guess I must have calibrated it properly during setup. Next thing I tried was return to home on a switch. I moved the plane out to around 5 or 600 meters from me and engaged return to home and it did come back although the whole ordeal did look a bit weird because I hadn't changed the stock parameters for that and the loiter circle was a bit tight but I was happy that this worked as it should which meant that I was now ready to go and do some tuning. Since I had a micro telemetry unit in the plane I hadn't programmed how to tune to a switch on the radio but I engaged the mode from my laptop via the telemetry link. After throwing the plane around for a bit I could actually see a mark improvement in the response and reaction when I gave it a command being able to see the whole plane and how it flies and it did start to fly a bit better. After that I flew around for a while longer playing with flaps, gliding, thermaling and so on and I have to tell you guys it was a pretty windy day but I've never felt as calm and relaxed when doing a maiden on a new plane with an autopilot in such conditions. Despite the wind and turbulent conditions the plane was rock solid. I guess the fact that I was looking at it from the tail and basically seeing pretty much the whole plane might have added to that sense of security about it because you actually see what the plane is doing rather than just a shaking and twitching image like what you would get from the front mounted camera. This point of view of the Phoenix was so mesmerizing that time just flew by in an instant while I was having some amazing fun chasing those thermals which is made easier now by the addition of the OSD. So I can actually see when the thermal is taking me up up and could try to stay in it. It was some great fun and you can definitely extend the flight time quite a bit that way especially if that is the goal of the flight. At some point I had to land to recharge the battery as always, can't get away from that sadly, but for the next flight I did program in a simple mission with a few waypoints and did set up auto takeoff just so I can see how it would work out. Unsurprisingly it worked great right from the start and the autopilot also managed to follow the mission quite well despite the windy conditions. I did do some more auto tuning which again improved the performance of the plane a bit and then used the remainder of the flight to go around thermaling and it was just so much fun. At times I was able to gain over 100 meters of altitude in a single pass over the warehouse buildings that actually create the thermals in the area and the whole experience felt quite satisfying. For the next flight, since I already knew missions were working well, I decided to chase the plane around with the Phantom again and this time it was up to the autopilot to maintain altitude which actually worked great as it did a good job of it. Only problem was the glider is quite quick in these conditions while the Phantom was indeed struggling quite a bit to keep up with it especially when going downwind. I guess I will have to repeat this chase outside of the city when I get a chance and also possibly in less windy conditions so I would actually have a chance to catch up to the Phoenix and get in close for those nice aerial shots that I love to do. Having the autopilot taking care of the straight line flying and altitude 
makes this so much easier because you only have to worry about the speed and the shooting angles so this should now be a lot more pleasant when the plane is not being flown line of sight by somebody and is jumping around along with the turbulences like a crazy chicken. Overall I really didn't know how this Omnibus F4 Pro and Audi plane marriage is going to perform or what to expect out of all of this but at the end of the day I was left with this sense of security because in this amalgamation I had seen and felt something familiar and something reliable in the face of the Audio Pilot code. The flight controller seemed to handle the code well and all of the features, the performance, the dependability I have come to expect out of a Pixhawk for instance, I did see here as well. This new and long awaited pairing of board and code was working just as well as any other Pixhawk that I've tried at least for what I wanted to do and how I want to use it but at a fraction of the cost. I really can't say the same thing about these boards and iNav because all I've seen from that firmware was weird flight behavior, random disarms and fail safes, turn locking when the plane keeps banking even after you let go of the sticks in a stabilized mode and so on. The experience now was so much different and so much better. Now the Arduplane firmware version for the Omnibus is a cut down version of the full code that you would otherwise see on a full fledged Pixhawk board because this F4 processor has limited memory but most people that would use this for FPV and some auto waypoint missions will never need the more advanced features which were omitted anyway and this is running on a $20 board not a $200 one and it does combine some modules that you would otherwise have to buy separate so in my book this is awesome and it has been long overdue. I have been dreaming of an audio pilot compatible board with integrated current sensor and OSD modules for years now. It is finally here, it is not a bank buster and we should all thank the racing copter hype for making all of this possible. As I already mentioned the next video will be of the flashing and setup of the Omnibus F4 Pro with audio plane just to keep things organized and in the meantime links for the stuff shown or used in this video can be found in the description below and using any of them to buy literally anything from those websites would help support this channel so henceforth you will have my unwavering gratitude as that is also how I make my living now. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you happy flying and until next time.